Hello to you beautiful people. My name is Nan Lakshmi and I'm here to elevate humanity for a better world. Yes, thank you for joining me here. If you are finding my videos for the first time, then welcome to my channel. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate the love and the support and I love being here on the YouTube sharing love and information. We are doing this together one by one indeed elevating humanity and creating a better world. So thank you for being here. And before I dive into this week's update, um, a little bit about myself. If you are curious and interested to know more about who I am and the work that I do in the world, check out my website, noalakshmi.com for astrology, of course, your own personal reading. And I do transformational work with individuals, taking your life to the next level physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. If you're intrigued and interested in all that, check out my website, noalakshmi.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go into what's happening. First of all, if you are watching this, congratulations. You have made it. You have survived the solar eclipse that we just had in Pisces uh, over the weekend, and boy, oh boy. I remember at the beginning of February, the, it was into the first week of February, and I said to myself, if I can only make it to the, through February, then this year is a piece of cake. Um, so indeed, it was intense, 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 and especially that eclipse, and we feel the effects of the eclipse, of course, months to come, but in the more immediate term, um, the few days before the eclipse, and of course, the eclipse itself, and then a few days after the eclipse, and it was a mixture of such powerful energy. I had so much powerful energy moving through me, and new meditations, and really incredible, incredible energy that I got to work with, and at the same time, it's like this fogginess and heaviness, and maybe you experienced that as well. We had a lot of Pisces energy, you guys, and we're still in it, but especially with the eclipse, because it is that crescendo, you know, the universe is, is that buildup, and there's a big opening that happens during the eclipse, and that activation that happens during the eclipse, and it was all in the sign of Pisces, with so much Piscean energy, it can feel heavy. It can feel kind of like foggy. It feels kind of like I'm in reality, but not so much. And then coming out of the out of that, that's why I said congratulations if you made it. It's like dusting yourself off and like what the heck just happened here? It almost feels like a hangover of some sort. And it's a very interesting time to to be in right now because we have all this fire of Aries with Mars and Aries and Uranus and Aries and those two met and they're still, you know, very close to one another, but they met right on the day of the eclipse. So this this motivation to move forward and and so like we had so many breakthroughs. You know, the the one thing that we experienced with this eclipse is the breakthroughs and revelations and just like new identities for ourselves, maybe new roles, new directions. It's like oh, I know what my purpose is, or I know what I want, and I'm this new identity, and I, I want to go and, and go for it and get it, and this motivation and fire under our asses, which is so lovely and wonderful and very strong and, and very powerful, and at the same time, it's like still dragging something behind with this Pisces energy, and we can feel this strong drive and strong sense of direction, and at the same time, it's like wow, the discipline to really to really do what we need to do and to really follow all these breakthroughs, all these revelations that we had to really follow. We need discipline, right? And it's not the easiest structure and discipline. It's not the easiest thing to achieve with all this Piscean energy. So I really want to encourage you to be maybe extra diligent and, and to really do the things that keep you in a state of, of balance and harmony. And I want to emphasize and I want to encourage you to meditate and pray or whatever your practice is. You know, it, meditation is not just sitting in silence. Whatever your practice is that takes you out of like the lower mind or the chattering mind or that place that doesn't know how to find discipline and structure and is like 
kind of like chaotic, has a direction, but not, not, not really knowing how to follow it. So you need the structure, you need the discipline, and you need the things that can keep you in that place where you can feel centered and you can feel connected to spirit. And that's a big theme that I want to talk about is that connection to spirit, is that connection to a higher source, because with all these break, breakthroughs and revelations, and it's like, okay, I've got this direction or this new identity, and then it's like, okay, what am I going to do with all that? Remember that you, it's not about you doing it alone from just the egoic place. So, oh, I've got the drive, and I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to force through it. That's like Mars in Aries. But the invitation is to follow the guidance of spirit. God, spirit, your higher self, your soul, whatever your word is, whatever the energy that you interact with and relate to. But you must right now follow the guidance of spirit. And you also have, you need to allow spirit to actually, well, spirit always talks to us. It's not a matter if, if, if it, spirit is, is talking to you or not. Um, it's about if you are, the question is if you are listening and if, if we are actually following the guidance of spirit. And I want to encourage you right now is to really follow that guidance, is to open up your channel for that guidance because you, especially if you had massive breakthroughs, especially if you have all kind of new identities coming up to the surface, new roles, new directions, it can be overwhelming. And so in order to counter that and not get overwhelmed, you've got to have the support of something larger than just what the ego can comprehend and see. So we're really looking at ego versus spirit, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment because Venus in retrograde is, is going to be a part of it. But the sun is meeting Neptune today. It's March 1st. So we're coming out of the eclipse of Pisces. Neptune and Pisces are connected. And after the eclipse, all this Piscean energy, we're still riding this wave. And then today, bam, the sun meets Neptune. Now that happens every single year, uh, once a year. But this year, right after the eclipse of, in Pisces, the sun meets Neptune in the sign of Pisces. So again, we're looking at the ego, at your own purpose, at your own identity, the light of who you are, the sun, meeting Neptune, meeting spirit, meeting God. And that can be, you know, that can be either meeting avoidance and checking out with Neptune or the sun meeting Neptune can be sun meeting your higher purpose, your higher self, God, spirit. So you've got to stay in that place of being open, being an open channel for your identity, for your purpose to be guided by spirit, for the messages to come through and for you to follow that. We also having Mercury just a few steps behind the sun. It's gonna, he's gonna meet uh, Neptune on the fourth, so three days from now. Few steps behind the sun. It's moving full speed. It's gonna bam meet Neptune as well. Now, Pis uh, Nep uh, Mercury is already in Pisces, and you guys, that can. You know, that can feel like you're getting lost in a sea of information. That can feel like you're just lost in the sea of information and it can bring a lot of confusion, a lot of delusion, especially with all the information that is available to us right now, way too much, way, way, way too much. You've got to plug yourself out of that and plug yourself into the channel within yourself that gets the real information and the right information. That information is not out there. What is out there, especially with all this Piscean energy, there's a lot of deception, delusion, and straight up lies. I'll be honest with you. So if you get caught up and if you follow that crap, then of course you're going to be lost and you're going to be confused and you're going to be divided and it's this versus that. And it's he said, she said, my invitation is to, to be in the, I say, spirit is talking through me and to me and I follow the guidance because I know now with all these breakthroughs and those in, in this big revelations and whatever you, I, new identities that you're feeling that is, are, are forming, that are birthing out of you, 
it's the help of 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 God, the help of spirit is necessary. And it's the, the big invitation really to open yourself up to that and to not fight so much with, you, with just your ego. Um, the ego can take you just to a certain place, but then you've got to mix the two together. The ego is not a bad thing. You need the ego. That's, that's what is driving you forward. So with Mars and Aries, and the ego is driving you forward to really create new things and reach new peaks and new heights that you've never even imagined were possible, knowing that you can do it alone. And when I say you can do it alone is, of course, you need other people because you've got Jupiter and Libra, you know, tugging on that Mars in Aries and like, hey, you've got to stay balanced. You've got to stay in harmony within your own life and also get help from other people. You, you're not supposed to just drive that this car alone or to, to take this sh ship into sea all by yourself. Other people find relationships, communities that help you. And then of course, the larger picture, open your perceptions, your perspective and see for, see it from, 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 from God's perception and not so much like the little details. I need to do this. I need to do that. Getting caught up in the house. But that's when you say, ah, I'm going to allow spirit to move through me in my life and, and follow the guidance and follow the signs. So, so important. And that's going to take, it's, that's taking me to one of the biggest things that are happening this week, which is Venus going retrograde, the planet Venus. And she ha, she's already stopped and she's going to get retrograde on the 4th of March. Venus is entering a complete new cycle. As up until now, Venus was visible in the night sky. If you've been watching the night sky, this beautiful, shiny, star it's actually a planet and that's venus and now venus is gonna disappear because she's going underworld into the underworld and she's gonna become a morning star for 40 days and 40 nights she's in retrograde and then also venus is starting a whole new cycle a whole new eight year cycle so very important to what is happening with with our sweet little venus and venus represents the feminine energy um, which, by the way, Venus in Aries is is really not that sweet and, you know, innocent. It's the fiery goddess and there's a lot of fire and passion and even anger when it comes to Venus in, in, in Aries. So that's that's a very important energy now to, to utilize and to connect with. The feminine energy is not always this like sweet and soft, okay? And Venus and Aries is definitely not sweet and soft. Uh, but she's going to go retrograde. And I want to talk about that, this, the fact that Venus is going in, into retrograde um, from the sign of Aries where she is right now. And she's going to go back into Pisces. And then she's going to go back into Aries. And that's very significant when a planet is in retrograde and then changing signs as well. So Venus in, in Aries is more about reviewing your relationship because anytime a planet is in retrograde, it's about reviewing and reevaluating this, this internal process that happens. It's a very good time. It's not a bad thing at all. So Venus in Aries is, uh, I want to in, invite you, the invitation is to review your relationship with yourself. Um, very important. And the quality of your relationship with yourself Going into Pisces, Venus going into Pisces is reviewing your relationship with spirit, is reviewing your relationship with God. Everything that I talked about, what is your relationship with this divine force? What is it? What is it for you? What is the quality? And then to tie it together is I want you to review and to look at how are those two relationships connected? The relationship that you have with yourself versus the relationship you have with spirit and with God and with with the source within you and throughout everything else, how are those two connected? And then to bring another layer into it is to look at your relationship with yourself and your relationship with spirit and how those two relationships, how the quality of those relationships affect all other relationships in your life. And anything that you are in a relationship with and not just people, but everything in your life, right? 
And that's part of really reviewing your relationship with yourself. So everything in your life that you are in a relationship with, this is a good time to reevaluate and review those relationships and the quality of those relationships. And don't be surprised if by the end of this time, and again, the invitation is for these 40 days is to take this time, utilize this energy, review those relationships and the quality and review your wants, review what it is that you like, review what it is that you are attracted to and review the things that you are attracting into your life. And if some of it is not in accordance to who you are and maybe some new breakthroughs that you've just had, then don't be surprised if during this retrograde period, you're going to make some decisions and especially when it comes to your relationships, especially when it comes to your finances, especially if, when it comes to different projects that you're working on. And, and, and most importantly is how you relate to yourself and the quality of, of your life when it comes to how much you give yourself, how much you, um, you value your time, your energy, your resources, you know, very, very important. Everything is a reflection of the one, which is you. So this Venus retrograde period is an immense time and a very important time to review that in your life. Um, you know, it's important because everything else will be affected accordingly. And people have been asking me, so I'll just say it here quickly. No, Venus in retrograde is not the best time to make any huge investments of money. It's time to maybe look at some things and maybe look at some directions that you might want to go with your money or new projects or even relationships. Not necessarily the best time to pull the trigger. So just be patient for 40 days if you can. And okay, that's my message for you for this week. Very, 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 very powerful week, yes. Um, so if you are interested in your own personal reading, go to my website, noahlakshmi.com, to book your soul signature reading. Another thing is that, that I'm very excited about is my 40 Days to Self Mastery. It's an, a remarkable group program that I'm about to launch in April, April 15th. If you are interested and would like to take your life to the next level, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, then definitely check out 40 Days to Self Mastery. Check out the link and there's an application form that you can fill out. And again, thank you for all the support and all the love. If you like these videos, then please share the videos, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate the support. And as always, I am sending you so much love and so much light. You are so, so beautiful, so, so, so amazing. And I'll see you next time. Satna.